It was last week that an FDA advisory committee panel backed approval of Celtron's biosimilar Remicade product, CTP13. I know we have some new survey data from rheumatologists and gastroenterologists who first word have polled in the past few days, um, which sheds some light on one of the most significant developments to have emerged from last week's meeting. That's right. We spoke to leading US regulatory expert Gillian Woollett last week, and she was particularly interested in the fact that the FDA has requested Celtrion complete a single switch study as part of their regulatory application for CTP13. Presumably this could have significant commercial implications? Well, potentially it could. The level of return on investment for biosimilar developers will depend notably on whether uptake of these products occurs in treatment-naive patients, in, these, in this instance, those receiving therapy with a TNF inhibitor for the first time, or whether patients are switched from a branded to biosimilar therapy. And we have some feedback from rheumatologists and gastroenterologists who have been polled by First Word since the ADCOM panel took place. We do. And we specifically asked physicians whether the inclusion of switch data in the label for CTP13 would make them more comfortable moving patients from branded Remicade to the biosimilar product. If the FDA were to include this data, it would certainly help drive such a trend. That said, around a third of the physicians we polled said the inclusion of switch data would not make them any more comfortable moving patients from the brand product to the biosimilar. So education and experience with biosimilars certainly appears to be a necessity to help drive uptake. What about payers? Surely they would welcome the inclusion of positive switch data? If the FDA is going to include the switch data in the label for CTP13, this is definitely something to watch. A number of analysts have already said that payers would gain more from clinical evidence supporting a single switch from branded to biosimilar product than the FDA granting full interchangeability status for a biosimilar. First words, actually speaking to US payers at the moment for a forthcoming biosimilar report, and as one medical director at a pharmacy benefit manager told us, as long as the clinical data is there to support the switch, he would have no issue mandating a patient that's currently being treated with the reference product being switched to the biosimilar. So while physicians may need some more convincing, I think payers are going to be much more aggressive on this front.